Hi, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen quick. All right, I'm pretty sure you guys are good to see it, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So hi, my name is Michaela Lockmiller and I'm with DePaul University. So sorry if you hear my cats running around in the background. Um, we are located in Greencastle, Indiana, which is right outside of Indianapolis, about 45 minutes. So you are close enough to a big city where you can go to big city things, but far enough away where you are in a close um, community, which is very safe. So looking at DePaul's uh, university breakdown, we are a small school of just over 1,700. A large majority of those are in our College of Liberal Arts. However, we do have a growing and thriving school of music. If you look at our student diversity rate, um, about 15% of our students are international from 35 different countries. About 23% of our students are domestic students of color from 38 different states. As you can also see on this screen, we have about 22% of our students who are first generation students and about 14 who are legacy. Um, we do have, as I mentioned right before, our College of Liberal Arts and our School of Music. So as you can see on the screen, this is our top 10 most popular majors, including economics, communications, computer science, etc. And if you are looking for our School of Music, there are four degrees that are located to the right of this. If you want to participate in our School of Music, but you don't want it to be that everything you do, that is okay. You can participate in it without it being your major. Some specific choirs, ensembles, orchestras, et cetera, do require an audition while others do not. So a couple of things that DePaul is known for, but one specifically is our global citizenship. So we are really big at studenting our students abroad. We are top 10 for the number of students studying abroad every year. And we do have more than 100 approved programs on six different continents. We send between 450 to 600 students abroad every year. That might not sound like a lot, but you need to remember we only have 1,700. Now, if you're not looking to go abroad for an entire semester, that is okay. The way our semesters are set up is it's a semester, couple weeks, semester, couple weeks. And in these miniature semesters, you can take a short-term trip with a professor. And that time you can also take an elective course or take a break and you would talk to your faculty advisor if you get a pick at that point in time. We also have this thing called deferred decision. So that means you don't have to officially declare your major until second semester of your sophomore year and you can still graduate at that time. However, you can do that earlier and whenever you do, clear your major, you will be able to pick your own faculty mentor. We also have this thing called the Up and Lecture, Lecture Series. That is where we bring world leaders, such as the ones listed on the screen, to DePaul's campus to speak to our students. So I want to talk about some things that are really big on DePaul and kind of why all of this matters that I've talked to you about so far. We do have a 97% placement rate. So that means within six months of graduation, 97% of our students have either a job or on some next form of education. We do have an 84% four-year graduation rate, whereas the national average is 56. And if you're looking to go on to med school or law school, good news, we have a 90% med school acceptance rate and an 80% law school acceptance rate within their first try. Now, if you're looking for internship or research opportunities, that is huge here. About 84% of our students participate in some form of an internship before they graduate. A couple of examples of internships students have done is we have a student intern with Delta and she went abroad um, every three weeks to a different country through Delta Airlines. Super cool. The founder of ESPN actually went to DePaul and we'll send about five students every year to the ESPN headquarters. 98% of our faculty have a PhD or higher, so really educated staff. We are the second lowest of student debt in the state of Indiana and top 7% of lifetime earnings. So our graduates do really well for themselves long term. Now our application process, so we are Common App exclusive. So that means if you Google us, it's gonna take you directly to the Common App page. We are SAT, ACT test optional. We've been that way since before COVID. And as far as I know, that's going to continue on for quite a while. We don't think a five hour test necessarily represents you well as a student or an individual. We do have a holistic review process. As you can see on the screen, we're looking at your transcript curriculum. So as long as you're taking difficult courses and pushing yourself to succeed, campus visit, senior year, et cetera. Our average GPA to get in this last year was a 3.9. We do not have a minimum and about 50% of our students submitted their test scores. So it's not gonna hinder you if you choose not to. Um, we do ask between one to three letters of recommendation and your secondary school report is something that will be filled out by your guidance counselor. So a couple of other things I like to touch on about DePaul University, um, some things that are popular on campus. We are division three for sports. We have a merit scholarship, which is a scholarship just for applying and getting accepted. And that is between 20 and $40,000. Some popular things on campus are intramurals like almost every other school. Greek life is really big here. I know a lot of universities will have some form of Greek life on their campus. However, DePaul does have around 
86% of our students who are involved in Greek life. So about two thirds, a large majority of our campus. And we do have 24 different fraternities and sororities and a deferred rush. You don't rush until second semester of your sophomore year. And I've talked a lot, but I haven't really dug too deep onto anything. So if you have any questions, I am gonna put my information in the chat and I am going to pass it on to the next individual. Perfect, thank you so much. Hopefully everyone can hear me now. Um, up next, we have Grinnell College. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah White. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission and Athletic Liaison here at Grinnell. I am going to share my screen with you all. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm hoping that um, McKinsey, if, if my slides don't adjust, you can jump in and let me know. Um, I, wanna, I wanna share with you a little bit of information about Grinnell. Extraordinary journeys seldom begin in obvious places. And one of those places is Grinnell College. I'm not going to quiz you on your Iowa geography, but Grinnell is located in the heart of the Midwest. We like to think of ourselves as conveniently located between the two coasts. You should be smiling. Campus is one hour from the Des Moines Regional Airport, no matter what time of the day it is. Grinnell College is located in Grinnell, Iowa, which is a community of about 10,000 people. The college is located a few blocks from the downtown district of Grinnell, and our student body is about 1,700 students all undergraduates, which means all of your classes will be taught by professors. And when you need help, you'll go to the professor for help. We are also very fortunate to have over a $2 billion endowment, which makes a lot of things possible on our campus. Grinnell students find their way to campus from all over the world. Our classes are discussion-based, so it's important to have a variety of viewpoints represented. We have a unique curriculum called the Individually Advised, which means outside of the required courses for your major, the only required course is called the First Year Tutorial, which is a welcome to Grinnell, both academically and socially, the very first semester you're on campus. Outside of the First Year Tutorial and requirements for your major, everything else is looked upon as electives for you to pick and choose from. One of the main reasons why this cur curriculum style works is because of our very strong academic advising. At Grinnell, we have a three-pronged advising system. When students arrive on campus, they receive an academic advisor, a Center for Careers, Life, and Service advisor, and a residence hall advisor. These advisors help guide and shape a student's individual Grinnell experience. At Grinnell, we recognize that learning takes place both in and out of a typical classroom setting. Grinnell students work closely with the Center for Careers, Life and Service to discuss not only what life after Grinnell might look like, but what opportunities might they wanna take advantage of during their time at Grinnell. Some of those opportunities might be a Grinnell funded internship or industry tour. One of the best kept secrets is that some of the best internships they don't pay you to do. If you get one of those internships, you can apply for funding through Grinnell. Grinnell works hard to level the playing field for everyone, so everyone has access. While some students choose to go directly to graduate school, others enter the professional world. Bottom line, a Grinnell education opens the door to a variety of opportunities. One of our most popular questions from students is, what is there to do in this small town in Iowa? Well, we stopped apologizing for our location long ago. We see the fact that we're in a small town in the heart of the Midwest truly as an asset to your college experience. You're going to have the opportunity to be part of a robust, intentional community. A typical, a typical year at Grinnell, there's over a hundred different clubs and organizations, over 500 different campus events. We're division three in the Midwest Conference for Varsity Athletics, plus offer a plethora of fine arts performances and activities. In addition, we strongly encourage and provide funding for off-campus study and student research. More than 70% of our students will participate in off-campus study before they graduate. 
either through a semester abroad or one of our course embedded travel trips. In addition, more than 50% of our students will complete a mentored advanced project before they graduate. A map, which is where a student either individually or in a small group designs their own research project or advanced project. Now everyone's favorite topics, admission and financial aid. Admission at Grinnell is holistic. Students, we are looking at you as a whole person. We are a common application user and do not have a supplement or an application fee. In addition, we are need blinded admission for domestic students, which means you are admitted based off of your merit, not based off of your family's ability to pay. We also meet 100% of institutionally determined need and we package students with no loans and offer merit aid. Our financial aid deadlines mirror our admission deadlines. We know this process can be overwhelming at times. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us with questions. We are here to help. Thank you for taking time to learn a little bit more about Grinnell and best of luck in your college search. Awesome, thanks Sarah. Uh, we are now gonna turn it over to St. Olaf College. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for, uh, for being with us here today. Um, my name is Gladys. I am an assistant dean of admissions at St. Olaf College. And what that means is that I am one of the people that gets to read your application. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit more about our campus. Um, St. Olaf is a small private liberal arts college in Northfield, Minnesota. Um, so as you can see from our picture there, right, we're in the southern part of the state. Um, we share Northfield with another small private liberal arts college um, called Carleton College. So out of the 20,000 people that live in Northfield, about 5,000 are college students. We bring in 3,000 and then Carlton brings in the other two. Um, what the liberal arts means for us is that students who are interested in a specific academic area, awesome, way to go. You can absolutely start taking those classes from day one. Um, but those 85 programs and uh, majors and concentrations, you really don't have to declare until the spring semester of your sophomore year. Um, so if you're looking into um, liberal arts colleges, that's probably the case for a lot of them. There are two exceptions to that, and that is music and nursing. Um, so those are the only two majors that you can apply to as an incoming student or as a current senior, whichever way you'd like to think about it. Um, for us, right, we have a 414 academic calendar. So you have the fall semester, the spring semester, or interim, which is a great time to take First of all, one class, right? You're only taking a single class during that time. You can take a class you love or maybe the one that you hate um, and entirely focus on that for four weeks. Um, for us, we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. Only our professors will teach our classes. So even if you do not have a teaching assistant doing that doesn't mean you do not have support. You certainly do. Um, we have the Center for Academic Advising that one assigns all of your faculty advisors as a first year student. They also help with one-on-one -on -one tutoring, if you need accommodations, um, whatever the case may be. Um, for us, right, among schools of our region, other liberal arts colleges, the number one that you see there simply talks about um, how many students we send abroad. So we send 75% of our students abroad at least once during their time at St. Olaf, and students can certainly go abroad more than one time. Um, the reason you might see music there is because St. Olaf is um, accredited in all four areas of the fine arts. So that means that if students are looking for a really competitive or engaging experience with the arts, they can find it here. Um, we're not a conservatory, but being accredited means that we have the resources, the faculty, and the experience to give you, an, um, give you the time and give you the resources to really be up to par with such an experience as a conservatory. Um, for St. Olaf, right, when thinking about in-person classes and things like that, we've been very happy to have those in person, um, including our labs. So kind of you see a little bit of, of all of that highlighted in those pictures. Um, when thinking about our community though, right, we are very residential. So 95% of our students live on campus all four years. Um, we have one dining hall, which is the center of campus. It's kind of the heart and soul of it all. Um, so our students certainly spend a lot of time there. It's where you build up your friendships, um, where you might get some shenanigans. That's just me being honest. Our students built a tower of cups 
from the first floor to the balcony of the second floor. Um, so if you're not doing that, you might be going train. That's one of our campus traditions. In the wintertime, our students take the plastic cafeteria trays and they go sledding or train, I guess, as our students will call it. Um, but besides that, right, you have about 233 student organizations to participate in. Um, we always have a fair, as you can see depicted there. Um, and it's a good time to just sign up for everything and see what you are interested in. You're certainly not um, committed to all of them, but it gives you a good idea of, of the community and students on campus. Um, we are D3, so we have varsity sports club. And as you can see there, a large portion of our students are involved in intramural sports. Um, for us, right, we're a school that um, wants to be accessible to as many students as possible. So we're committed to meeting 100% of demonstrated financial need. What this means, um, very simply, is that St. Olaf will take our ticket price. We will review your FAFSA and your CSS profile and determine, all right, um, you might be able to pay X, Y, or Z amount. Um, we subtract that, and then that balance is what we're committed to meeting. So that's what meeting need means for St. Olaf. Um, if you have any questions about the deadlines, I have my contact information in the next slide for you all. Um, but the main thing to take away from my presentation today is that St. Olaf is a really relationship-driven institution. This is true with your professors, with your peers, and we'd love for this to start with admission. So please bother us with questions. If you want to come for a visit, come on over. Um, if you want to meet with a professor or a current student virtually, we absolutely offer those connections online for you. Um, so just let us know how we can be of support throughout your college search and application process. Um, one more thing I wanna talk about for St. Olaf, right, is yes, we are preparing our students for their four years here, but we also wanna prepare you for after St. Olaf. So as you can see there, our students are actively preparing by doing things in and out of the classroom. Our students are actively involved in internships, research opportunities, whether it's on or off campus, and the Piper Center, a team of 12, is ready to help you with that. Um, so as you can see, there is my contact info. Feel free to take it down and I'll also pop it into the chat. But thank you all so much for listening to me. Awesome. Up next, we have Augsburg University. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen here. Awesome, and definitely let me know if you can't hear me or if you can't see my screen. Um, but thank you everybody for, for allowing me to be here tonight. My name is Shauna Fulford. I am the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Augsburg University, um, and also one of the counselors who works with students applying from the state of Arizona. Um, a little bit about Augsburg. We are a small private college um, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So in the big city here in Minnesota, um, pretty easy flight from Arizona to get here. Um, and we're a small school for the, for the private schools that we have have here. Um, we only have about 2,200 students at Augsburg. Um, average class size is right around 18. So it's nice that we can offer the benefits of a small school. You get a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention. You really get to know the faculty. More importantly, they get to know you. Um, but what's also really nice is you have the advantage of being in a large city. Um, so it's nice that we can really use the city as an extension of the classroom. We are a liberal arts institution, um, so we offer a lot of different programs in a lot of different areas. Biology and business do tend to be two of our largest programs, but we also offer some very unique pr programs, medieval history, music therapy, we have a four-year film degree, um, graphic design, game design, so it definitely brings in students from all over the country. Um, one kind of unique thing about Augsburg, especially being here in the Midwest, is that we are the most diverse co private college in the state of Minnesota, arguably the entire Midwest, and something that we're really proud of. Um, we've worked really hard to have that intentional diversity. We currently are 53% students of color in our undergraduate population. We are a Lutheran school, but only about 15% of our students identify with being Lutheran, and then we are also one of the top 30 LGBTQIA plus supportive and affirmative colleges in the country. Um, also lots of neurodiversity, physical diversity, students coming from all over the country, all over the world. It's a lot of that geographic diversity as well. So something we're very proud of. Um, once again, small schools. So as you can see, average class size is 18, student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. Um, so nice small classes, a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention um, with professors. Um, from day one, students have faculty advisors, so you're one of very few students they're working with. So they really get to help individualize your time at Augsburg. 
We're also part of a cool consortium um, with four other small private colleges in the Twin Cities here in Minnesota. Um, and so students are able to take classes at those other schools for free, really opens up the options for our students. Being a school um, in and of the city, we are very, um, we're very into experiential learning, getting students out of the classroom as much as possible to do a lot of hands-on learning. So built into all of our programs, all of our courses, all of our majors are pieces where students get to do that hands-on learning, whether it's going to um, art museums, walking tours, really using the city as an extension of the classroom. In addition, we also have what's called the Augsburg experience. So a way for students to get some of those tangible experiences to take with them after college. So students can do internships, we have um, over 200 study abroad programs students can go on. We're very, very big into service learning community service, so students can do service learning projects. And then we're one of the top schools in the state of Minnesota for receiving the most National Science Foundation grants. So students are able to do research and get paid to do research. Um, so something that we're really proud of is not only getting that textbook degree, but also some tangible real world experiences you get to take with you. A little bit about athletics, like um, a lot of the other colleges here on, on this Zoom tonight, we are also Division Three, part of the MIAC conference, so a really competitive division, uh, excuse me, conference for our division. We have 22 varsity sports. We just added women's wrestling in um, the 1920 season, so we're really excited to have um, our women's wrestlers um, on campus. Um, but if that's part of your college journey, definitely let us know. We can always connect you to the coaches as well. Also have lots of fine arts activities for students to be involved in, um, whether that's through music, instrumental, vocal, theater performances, studio art, film, um, also speech debate team. You never have to major in these areas to still be a part of them. So keep that in mind that you can major in whatever you would like and still kind of mix and match your extracurriculars. In addition to athletics and fine arts, we have over 50 student clubs and organizations. So lots of ways for students to get involved and be active, engaged within the campus community. Pretty standard application process to Augsburg. We are on rolling admission, so there's no set deadline students have to apply by. Um, we also do a very holistic review process. So there's the Augsburg application on our website, which is free and it's always free to apply to. We also are a member of the common application. So either route, you're more than welcome to apply. We have students do three short answer, um, excuse me, sh three short answer essay questions. Um, those really help us get to know you more. Everything else we see is numbers. This is our way of really getting to know who you are, what you're all about, why you're interested in Augsburg. We also require a high school transcript. Once again, holistic review. So we're really diving deep into what high school are you at? What type of classes have you been taking? Um, and then optional is a letter of recommendation, not required, but we do recommend sending one in. And then we are a test-free school. So ACT, SAT is not a part of the application process whatsoever. So no need to send that in. We are a private school, so things look very expensive. With room and board, our sticker price is about $52,000 per year. But 100% of students get scholarships. 98% overall get financial aid, need-based aid. So definitely check out the website. You'll be able to see every single scholarship you would be eligible for, which are guaranteed all four years. Um, and then it, definitely check out our virtual tour. If you can get up to Minneapolis, awesome, but we have a really great virtual tour online and I'll also throw my contact information in the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much. And last but not least, we have University of Missouri. Hi everyone, my name is Cassie Rankin and I am located in the state of Missouri and I work with students in the Northeast part of the state and then in Iowa. Um, Tommy Rogers is the representative that is based in the state of California and will work with a lot of our Arizona students. But after I um, show, the show our presentation, I will put both my contact information and his contact information as well. So like I said, I am from the University of Missouri. We are located in the city of Columbia. Being in the city of Columbia, we are the fourth largest city in the state. We have about 120,000 people in our city population. And our campus is only a few minute walk from downtown Columbia, where there are tons of um, things to do in downtown. So local shops and local music venues to go see. We have two really big music um, events throughout the year. One's in the fall called Roots, Blues and Barbecue. 
And then we have a documentary film festival that is in the spring. And it's one of the largest in the country, which is really cool opportunity. But for um, Mizzou, we have about 31,000 students on our campus. 24,000 of those are gonna be undergraduates and about 7,000 are graduate and professional level students. That second number is so large because we are one of six institutions in the entire country that has a veterinary school, a law school, a medical school, and a research reactor all on one campus. We currently have students from every state in the United States, and then we also have 110 different countries uh, represented on our campus. We are also both a land-grant institution and an AAU institution, so we have a lot of different things that students can study here on campus, and we are also research-based, so every department on campus is involved in research at all times throughout the year. And then for our admissions requirements, the first thing we are going to look at is your high school transcript. So we are going to look at 17 core classes, and those are listed out on your screen. I know that every state and every school is a little bit different. So if you might be missing one of these core classes, that's perfectly okay. Our, we have real people looking at our transcripts every single day to make sure that students can still be admitted even if they might be missing one or two of these classes. Now we are also going to, if we are using a test score, we're going to use these two different scales depending on if your school ranks the students or if it is a non-ranking school. So we have a sliding scale. If you have about a 21 on the ACT, which is about a 1060 to a 1090 on the SAT, we're going to want you to be in the top 38% of your graduating class or have above a 3.05 core GPA. The core GPA is calculated in our office based off of those 17 core classes that we talked about. And then for seniors this year, we also have test optional. And in lieu of sending us those test scores, for test optional, you are going to send us a few essay questions. We are also a member of the Common App. So if you apply with the Common App, you're going to send us the, you're gonna fill out the list of activities and then do one of their essays. And then if you apply through our Mizzou application, you're going to fill out three short essay questions. They're gonna ask you about the activities you're involved in, why you wanna to come to Mizzou and anything else that you want our office to know about you as a student. And then this is a little bit more about our college here um, on campus, we currently have over 300 different degree programs. These range from things like journalism. We have our School of Engineering, a School of Business, the College of Agriculture, Food and Natural Resources. We even have nursing here on campus and pretty much anything that you can think of to study. We also have 600 different clubs and organizations. These are also things that you can think of we always tell students to be involved in something that's related to their degree program and then involve themselves into something that they truly enjoy. We have clubs that range from ballroom dancing to bass fishing to fencing and even a floral design club and a Quidditch team that has been to a number of final fours, which I think is always really cool to see them on campus. And then we also have 20 division one team sports here in Columbia. Um, if you also like sports, you can also be involved in club and intramural sports on campus, as well as we have um, fraternity and sorority life as well. And here, the state of Missouri is the show me state. And so we want to show you hands-on learning. So we want all of our students to be able to see their career paths before they graduate. So all of our students will be either involved in undergraduate research, they will be involved in an internship, either on campus or off campus, or you might just have some hands-on opportunities within those classrooms. Specifically for things like nursing, they are going to have clinical work in their last two years um, and things like that. These are just some important dates. December 1st is our scholarship deadline. And then we have automatic scholarships as well as we were able to give our students over $140 million you can set up a visit in person or virtually. 
And then this is our general contact information as well. And I'll drop my contact information in the chat too. Thank you so much. And we do have a little bit of extra time. So I'm gonna pose some questions to the group. If you guys could put your um, videos back on and just go in the same order that we began. Um, so what advice would you give someone going through the college process? Hi, so sorry my things weren't working earlier. I had no idea, um, but some advice that I would give um, obviously I'm kind of young, so I did just graduate college. So this is somebody like really firsthand perspective and this might sound silly, but going through your college search process, I would create a second email address and give that to all of your colleges, write it on your PSAT, SAT applications, all of those, because if not, all of these colleges are going to start emailing your personal email and it's going to be really hard to keep track of. And I know that this again might sound silly, but I highly recommend you do it. Kayla, that was a great piece of advice. That was what I was going to give. Great minds. Um, and uh, so I guess the piece of advice that I would give is um, try to take advantage of some of the virtual visit opportunities that um, several of us are offering if you're not able to make it to campus. I think that one of the silver linings over the last, what, almost year and a half or so is that we all have greatly increased what we're able to offer online for you. And a lot of us are offering like live information sessions, live tours, live student panels. So I would encourage you if you can't make it to campus to visit and if we're not coming to your high school to visit, um, to take advantage of what we do offer online. It's a great way to show us that you're interested and to learn a little bit more about all of our places. I think oh, I would absolutely echo um, both of what Kayla and Sarah have shared so far. Um, I would say that if there are seniors in the room, I know deadlines are coming up for a lot of colleges, tis the season. Um, so I would say take a deep breath. Um, do that right now if you want, like inhale and exhale. I know it can be a hard time, um, but know that the hard work you're doing is gonna pay off and that if you need support, ask for it. It's not bad to ask for help. So whether it's your, your admissions officer, a family member, a teacher, a counselor at school, um, there are so many people that want to see you succeed even now. Um, so let us know how we can be of support. Yeah, I was actually going to kind of piggyback off of that as well. Um, I think my advice would be don't be afraid to use us counselors as, as a resource. That's why we are in the positions we're in. Um, even if our institution isn't the best fit for you, a lot of us know counselors or admissions office officers at other colleges, um, and we can help you get to the place that is the best fit for you. So no matter how small your question is or how big it is or how dumb you might think it is, ask it. That is what we are here for. That is literally our job is to help walk you through this process. So don't be afraid to use your admission counselors. Yeah, I'm going to share kind of the same advice as a lot of the other people have. Um, I always suggest visiting campuses if you have that opportunity to see if that campus feels at home for you. And if not, always doing the virtual tours or meeting with departments virtually to learn a little bit more about what they do to see if it's the right fit for you. And yeah, do not hesitate to reach out to any of the representatives from each college to kind of talk about any questions that you need answered or anything else like that. Awesome, great advice everyone. And for my personal favorite question, what is one thing that you want students to remember about your school? This is kind of a difficult one, but I think if you're going to remember anything about DePaul, I think you should remember that it's an investment. So I know a lot of colleges are going to cost a lot of money, and that's going to be kind of synonymous no matter where you go. But I do think it's important to remember that DePaul is an investment. If you remember on that last slide that you didn't get to see, um, top 7% for lifetime earnings across all universities in the nation. So again, you're going to graduate and do really well. So just remember you're investing in yourself by going to college, particularly at DePaul. This is a hard question. I guess what I would say about Grinnell is that um, Grinnell College tries really hard to provide access to everyone, um, whether that's through generous financial aid, fully funding internships, research, 
the classroom environment, what have you. Um, and so I, I would just stress access to opportunities, both in the typical classroom setting and outside of the classroom setting. I was, again, great question. I'm a little stumped. So I think I'm just gonna share something that maybe encourages students to reach out. Um, St. Olaf has a cereal bowl, not a rose bowl, a cereal bowl. So if you wanna know more, let me know, but it is related to our varsity teams. So. Yeah, this is a really good question. I think the one thing to remember about Augsburg University, and it's something like I mentioned in the presentation that we're really proud of is our intentional diversity. If you're able to physically get to campus, you will see that students do not fit into a box. They aren't all coming from the same backgrounds or look the same or interested in the same things. Um, Augies are very active, they're very engaged, they like to do things and, and do good. Um, so they all have that in common, but they really are anyone and everyone. And that's something that we really like is that our students are coming from such different experiences. And so it's really a place where we hope everyone can belong and feel like they can, um, but you don't have to fit in because there's no one way to, to fit in at Augsburg, so. Something that I want students to remember about the University of Missouri is that we have our Missouri method, which is wanting our students to have hands-on opportunities in their career fields before they graduate. So for some students, this is gonna look like an internship. For some, it's going to be research. For some, it's just going to be having hands-on opportunities within their classrooms. But we wanna make sure that all students are seeing those career paths before they graduate to make sure that's the right fit for them. Perfect, and for our last question, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Okay, um, maybe this is just as Paul specific, but I'm gonna think it's for everyone. If you have one bad grade your freshman year, your whole college search process is not screwed. Like you're still gonna be okay. Your one C is not gonna completely prevent you from growing and getting into a college. I know when I'm looking at applications, I'm looking for your trend. So are you continuing to take rigorous classes throughout your four years? And are you going up? Are you going down? Are you staying the same? So if you have one bad grade, don't freak out. I was that person in high school that got one B minus and was like, I'm never going to get to any colleges. And that wasn't true. You're going to be OK. Um, I don't remember who said it earlier, but take a deep breath. Like You're going to be OK. So I guess. What I would say is um, I feel there's a lot of talk about gatekeepers, people who admission counselors and whatnot. Um, and the one thing I would want to stress to you all is kind of like what Michaela said. We've all been through this process. We're all human. We get that life happens. Um, we really do take the time. Um, places like Grinnell, similar to us, we do really read everything. We discuss everything. Um, you know, we are real people um, who are compassionate about things. And so I just want to, I just want to stress that, you know, those of us who are seen as gatekeepers, so to speak, are real people who have been through the process. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to us. We're not these evil people locked behind these big doors, um, so anyways, I like to think we're all very friendly. We're all very social people, as you can tell, lots of smiles in this room, so. Um, I would say one thing that students often believe about their essay in particular is that they, it has to be the most academic piece of writing they've ever put forth in their lives that you should use all of your SAT and ACT words and make it sound uber professional. And that's just not the case. We want to get to know you through your essay. And we know that you probably don't use 15 ACT or SAT words in a paragraph. It sounds awkward. <laughs> so just be sure that you take some time to think about what do I want to share about myself? Um, and I will speak for St. Olaf, right? Um, we want to get to know you. So put that into your essay. If you have fun writing it, we're going to have fun reading it. Yeah, kind of to go off the application process, I think one thing we oftentimes see with students is they think when it comes to the activities or leadership opportunities they've had, it has to be like student council president, captain of the football team, these really big positions um, held at their high school. 
but any sort of community involvement, family responsibilities. If you can't be a part of a bunch of school activities because you have to work 20 hours a week, those things are just as important as those leadership opportunities you might have um, in the school. So we always encourage our students think beyond just the school walls. It's okay if you aren't involved in 15 activities in school because you have other responsibilities or involved in other organizations. So keep in mind, those things are just as important as being student council president or the captain of a sports team. So um, we understand the, um, the dedication and the teamwork and the responsibility that comes with having a job or taking care of family members, those things too. And those are just as important. For Mizzou, I know that I've talked to a lot of students and I want to make sure that everyone knows that we are not comparing you to any other student that is applying. We want you to know that we are just looking at you as a student and we want to see you as holistically as we can. We are not comparing you to anyone else and most schools are not either. Thank you all so much. All great advice. Um, we are right at the end of our session. So I'd like to say thank you, panelists. Thank you, students. Thank you, parents, for joining us. Um, when you close the window, there's going to be a very quick five question survey. We appreciate any feedback you might have uh, in a recording. There's one more session tonight. So if you want to sign up for that, that'd be awesome. Uh, recording will be available at strivescan.com slash greater Arizona. So with that, I'd like to wish everyone a good evening and have a great rest of your week.